Good morning. This past week, we passed a grim milestone in our nation. And now more than 100,000 lives have been lost to COVID-19. Our presiding Bishop Michael Curry has called upon our churches to remember these 100,000 lives that were cut short by this virus, as well as their loved ones who are grieving. From today's Gospel for Pentecost, the Gospel of John, Jesus cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scriptures has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. Ponder with me on this Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the question, what is the Holy Spirit like? What is the Holy Spirit like? The Holy Spirit, that third figure of the Holy Trinity, is often referred to using feminine pronouns. God, for me, is the essence of the best we humanly know of what constitutes a father and what constitutes a mother. Perhaps you have been blessed by having a mother and father that are equally reflective of the image of God. The greatness of our faith in God is that God encompasses the totality of male and female, the completeness of fatherhood and motherhood. The creation story of Genesis proclaims that God created both male and female in the image of God. Today though, indulge briefly with me on an understanding of the Holy Spirit through qualities of motherhood those qualities of motherhood that God intends. For most of us, it is hard to imagine our lives without our mother being there for us until she is not. It is easy to take our mothers for granted, yet all of us will lose our mothers, and many of us at way too early an age. My wife was only 26 when her, her mother passed into eternal life. I was blessed to have my mother for 46 years. And yet I have come to understand that the loss of a mother cannot be comprehended, no matter what the age, but instead endured. As Jesus was preparing his disciples for his ascension to heaven, they could not imagine how they would go on without him in his fleshy, earthly form. What would they do when Jesus was not by their side, mothering them, if you will? What will I do when I cannot pick up the cell phone and call my mother? They could not have yet known about the gift of the Holy Spirit that would help fill, would help fill that emptiness and give them the courage and strength to move forward and establish the Christian church. The best mothers are those that encourage their children to move forward, dream big dreams, and accomplish great things that strengthen the kingdom of God. You know with me as well that the Holy Spirit is often referred to as the comforter. Jesus' promise to his disciples was that he would not leave them comfortless. The gift of the Holy Spirit given to us in baptism and confirmed again in our confirmation is that God is always there for us, both in the joys and within the sorrows of our lives. The Holy Spirit as comforter is with us in this pandemic as well as that future when it is no longer a threat. Jesus never leaves us comfortless, even in this time when we are unable to worship within our church buildings. The 
paradox of our faith that we are perhaps experiencing is that it seems that people in times such as these are more willing to take hold of the cup that Jesus holds out for them, the very cup of life. When things are going well, and things are easy, we are often apt to take hold of something else in place of the cup of our Lord Jesus. This Pentecost, as uncertain and difficult it is for the church, Jesus still offers to each of us anew the cup of life. The Holy Spirit has filled the airwaves today. The Holy Spirit has filled the internet. The Holy Spirit is filling your home. The Holy Spirit is filling your heart. And we all together can find comfort and strength in the Holy Spirit to live fully, to serve fully, and imagine fully a future filled with possibilities and hope. Amen. I invite you now with me to remember the 100,000 lives, those souls that have been lost in this pandemic. Let us pray. Remember thy servants, O Lord, according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people, and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of thee, they may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And also for their families and for their loved ones. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray thee, with all those who mourn, that casting every care on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us together conclude by together praying the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love, those we are called to love, this Pentecost, and forevermore. God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.